Buffer Solutions Firstly, let me quickly teach you the basic concept of buffer solution. For example, consider water in this beaker. Now I add few drops of acid to this water. We can see that the color of the water changes to red. Thus we say that when color changes, its pH changes. Secondly, consider water in this beaker. Now I add few drops of base to this water. We can see that the color of the water changes to blue. So we say that when color changes, its pH changes. Thirdly, consider unknown solution in this beaker. Now I add few drops of acid to this solution. We can see that color doesn't change. Thus we say that no color change means no pH change. Secondly, I add few drops of base to this solution. Again we can see that color doesn't change. Thus we say that no color change mean no pH change. Therefore, we conclude that acid and base cannot change the pH of this solution. Thus we say that this solution is a buffer solution. Therefore, we define buffer solution as a solution which resists change in pH when a small amount of acid or base is added to it. Let me repeat it. A solution which resists change in pH when a small amount of acid or base is added to it. Note down that the word buffer means to digest shock. So buffer solution digests the shock of pH. Now let me teach you that how can we prepare buffer solution. Well, in chemistry, there are two types of buffer solutions. Acetic buffer solution and basic buffer solution. Remember that here I will teach you my personal method which some people may do not like it but it is the most simple one which student easily understand. Now in case of acetic buffer I will take weak acid plus its salt with group 1 or group 2 elements. For example consider hydrogen cyanide. We know that hydrogen cyanide is a weak acid. Now I remove hydrogen atom from it and instead of hydrogen I will replace it by sodium. So I get sodium cyanide. Now a mixture of hydrogen cyanide plus sodium cyanide will make acetic buffer solution. Secondly, consider acetic acid. We know that acetic acid is a weak acid. Now I remove hydrogen from it and instead of hydrogen I will replace it by potassium. So I get potassium acetate. Now a mixture of acetic acid plus potassium acetate form acetic buffer solution. Thirdly, consider carbonic acid. We know that carbonic acid is a weak acid. Now I remove hydrogen from carbonic acid and instead of hydrogen I replace it by sodium. So I get sodium carbonate. Now a mixture of carbonic acid plus sodium carbonate form acetic buffer solution. So by this way we can easily form acetic buffer solution. While in case of basic buffer solution I take weak base and its salt with chlorine, sulfate and nitrate ion. For example consider ammonium hydroxide. We know that it is a weak base. Now I remove hydroxide ion from it and I replace it by chlorine ion. I get ammonium chloride. Now a mixture of ammonium hydroxide plus ammonium chloride will form a basic buffer solution. Secondly, again consider ammonium hydroxide. Now I remove hydroxide ion from it and I replace it by sulfate ion. I get ammonium sulfate. Now a mixture of ammonium hydroxide and ammonium sulfate will form a basic buffer solution. Thus using this simple method, we can easily prepare acetic buffers and basic buffers. Now let me teach you the working of buffer solution or how buffer solution maintain constant pH. Well, buffer solution work by neutralizing any added acid or base to maintain the constant pH. Simply remember that buffer solutions maintain 
the constant concentration of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in its solution. For example, consider acetic buffer solution which contain acetic acid and sodium acetate. We know that acetic acid is a weak acid which partially dissociate into acetate ion plus hydrogen ion. For example, if there are 8 acetate molecules, it will dissociate into 1 acetate ion and into 1 hydrogen ion. Secondly, sodium acetate will dissociate into acetate ion plus sodium ion. Here, let's consider that I add potassium hydroxide to this buffer solution. Now, this hydrogen ion of the buffer solution will attack on this hydroxide ion to neutralize it by making water molecule, while acetate ion will attack on potassium ion to neutralize it by making potassium acetate. Now here, the equilibrium is disturbed. So acetate ion will dissociate into acetate ion and hydrogen ion to maintain the constant pH of the solution. Secondly, consider that I add acid like HCl to this buffer solution. Now this sodium ion of the buffer will attack on chlorine ion to neutralize it by making sodium chloride, while this acetate ion will attack on hydrogen ion to neutralize it by making acetic acid. Thus by this way, the buffer solution maintain its constant pH when a small amount of acid or base is added to it. Here, let me teach you one of my favorite questions, which a lot of students do not know to answer. Why we use weak acid in buffer solution? Firstly, remember that we do not use strong acids in buffer solutions because strong acids completely dissociate into its ions. So the dissociation of strong acid is not reversible. Therefore, we do not use strong acids in buffer solutions. Secondly, we use weak acid which partially dissociate and its dissociation is reversible. It means that when the hydrogen ion concentration is disturbed in the solution, weak acid will further dissociate to produce more hydrogen ion in order to maintain constant pH of the solution. Therefore, remember that we use weak acid in buffer solution. Finally, let me teach you the examples of buffer solutions in our daily life. Firstly, baby lotions are usually buffer solutions. They maintain the constant pH of 6 of the baby skin to prevent rashes and growth of bacteria. Secondly, our blood also contain buffer solution which maintain the 7 pH of blood streams. Thirdly, the shampoo we use in our daily life also contain buffer solution. It keeps the constant pH of the soup, otherwise it would damage our hair. Similarly, buffer solutions are widely used in pharmaceutical industry to produce excellent medicines. Thus, these are the daily life examples of buffer solutions. I hope that you have learned all about the buffer solutions.